In this video, I'm gonna show you why exposure is absolutely critical to image quality and flexibility in post. I'm also gonna teach you how to utilize two tools in camera that you should always be using, the histogram and highlight alert. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up friends? My name is Pai. Welcome back to Adorama TV. It is wonderful being here. It's nice having a little bit of hair and not having to wear my hat. My buzz cut, it has grown back a little bit. I don't have to get railed on by you guys by wearing a hat now. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now this is part three on our exposure series. If you haven't checked out the first two videos, I highly recommend going back and watching them prior to this video. Let's start with the histogram. Let's discuss what it is and why it's critical as a tool. So I'm over here in Lightroom right now and you're gonna see this raw file. This is actually a raw file captured six years ago, okay? So you can see in the top left, it was shot in 2014. This is out in the Bahamas. At the top right of this file, you're gonna see the histogram. Now, let me draw out what this essentially means. I know all of us have an aversion to math, so I'm gonna keep this as straightforward as possible. So this is a standard graph, okay? And on the left side, I'm gonna write the word amount, okay? This is our Y axis, right? What the X represents is shadows to highlight. So on this side, we're looking at shadows. On this side, we're looking at highlights. And the middle, we're looking at midtones. So a histogram is simply a graphical representation of the amount of the image that is in each of these different zones. So for example, if you have an image like this one, where there's quite a bit of information in the shadows. Well, what are those shadows? They're actually the rocks in the scene, right? So what it's telling us is that we have like this spike in the rocks, okay? And that spike means we have quite a bit of information over here in the rocks. It's then telling me that we have some information over here in the midtones, and then it's giving me another little spike over here towards the highlights, okay? So it's simply the amount of information that's located in different areas of the kind of shadow to highlight range. So it's gonna look a bit different with every single image, but what it's telling us is very important. What we want to prevent, if you look at this histogram back here in Lightroom, so you can actually see that shadow to highlight kind of expressed by just mousing over. So on the very left side, we have the blacks, then we have shadows, then we have exposure, which is Lightroom's way of saying midtones, and then we have highlights, and then we have whites, okay? So that's a representation. Now, as I adjust the exposure up and down, you'll see that more of the image is gonna be in the shadows if I push it towards the left. If I push it towards the right, you're gonna see that more of the image is in the highlights now and we end up blowing out the sky, right? So what we wanna do with our exposure is maximize information, meaning I wanna keep all of the shadows without letting any of the highlights blow out. Here's what I mean. If I were to expose in camera down here, like let's say two stops down, well, all my highlights are well within the range of exposure, right? But my shadows start to get clipped and I start to lose image information. Now, when I push and pull the file, I get wonky results. I'm gonna get green noise. I'm gonna get all sorts of different colors. Similarly, if I expose up here in camera, well, the subjects look nice, but the sky ends up being blown out, right? So where I wanna land is somewhere in between here. Now, I was very close on this exposure. I would say there's a little bit more room. If I press J to bring up that highlight and clipping alert, I can see that right around half a stop above where I was, I could get a little bit more of the shadows and have my highlights still completely retained, okay? But let's leave it right here. I wanna show you now the reason why. With all of this information present, well, development becomes very simple and I can push and pull a raw file in very interesting ways very easily. So let me create a virtual copy of this. And what I'm gonna do is go to um, Visual Flow Presets. And don't worry, I'm gonna show you these settings in just a moment. If you don't have them, if you don't use this system, that's totally fine. You don't need to go out and buy anything. I wanna show you guys how it's done. So Visual Flow Presets is based on lighting condition development, okay? So what we have over here in HDR is a preset that's going to pull out the dynamic range of an image. Now, one click and what we end up with is basically a finished shot. From here, 
I might make a tweak to contrast. I might pull down my exposure a tiny bit. I might zoom in and say, is the white balance good? Yes, it is, but I'm good. I could even go from here and say, well, now I'd love to drop in a little bit more of a burn over the sky. Let's actually pull the sky down just a bit more. We have this flexibility to do whatever we would like with that raw file, and we're not gonna introduce noise and grain by doing it because all the information was there. So take a look at that for a moment. Look at the before and the after. It's a crazy transition and it's incredibly simple to do. Now, all we're doing inside of Lightroom to get to this after is we're pulling the highlights down, we're raising the shadows up, we're pulling the whites down and raising the blacks. Now, when you do this, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna turn off the tone curve and I'm also gonna turn down the contrast. Whenever you do this on a raw file, you end up flattening it out completely. What that means is if you look over here at the image, it is very flat and it lacks contrast, right? So what we've done in the tone curve is we've added an S curve and you can follow these exact points. So it's a point down here, mid-tones at 37, 47. We have one at 65, 83 and 78, 92. So this is dialing back a lot of that contrast. Then we go up to the actual contrast and we might make an adjustment to add even more contrast back into the image. So we essentially pull all the tones back and then we would add additional contrast to get everything back in the image. In fact, I'm gonna go into compare view and I'm gonna zoom in on both these images just so you can see there's no loss in quality. If we start with a well exposed raw file, we're not gonna introduce noise, we're not gonna have any color artifacting when we start to push that raw file a bit. So this demonstrates the importance of why we need to get to the right exposure, why we need to maximize that information. Now let's talk about why we should be using this tool in camera. Now looking at Lightroom, I have a few different images loaded up. I've actually placed these same images onto the camera. So let's go ahead and grab our camera. So first, when I'm shooting, I'm always gonna be using the histogram. So if I jump into live view right now, you can reveal the histogram on this camera by pressing the information button. So if this is what you're seeing, if I press info once and then twice and then a third time, our histogram is gonna pop up, right? On each camera, it might be a little bit different. Just look up your histogram in your camera manual to figure out how. So from here, we see this immediate graphical representation of the image. Now let's go ahead and just play a couple of these images and let's talk through those histograms. Okay, so looking at this image, what you'll notice is from the back of the camera, it's pretty easy to read the entire histogram and know exactly what's happening. So when we look at the image, we see a lot of this image, a lot of the area around our model, right? All this stuff around the model, this is all in shadow. So we see a good spike in our blacks and shadows. And that's to be expected because this scene has a lot of those dark components, right? Then we go over to the right side and we start to see a little bit less of the highlights. Now, this is where we start getting into the highlight alert and why it's an important tool in conjunction with your histogram. So here's what I'm gonna do. I have loaded the highlight alert. It's one of the items in my quick menu. So if I press menu and I get here, it's the first item because it's the one that I'm most frequently accessing. Why? because when I'm showing clients images, I don't want the image to be blinking wherever it is. So the histogram tells me there's a tiny little bumper spike at the very right side. What I wanna make sure is that that little spike or that little blown out piece is not on skin. So on an image like this, it'd be very hard to tell just by reading the histogram what's happening. So when I load the highlight alert, I see in the top left side, there's a little bit blinking there. And on this chair, there's a tiny bit blinking there. We're good, we're okay. Let's take a look at another file. This is another image where, again, we're working with hard light, right? So in this scene, if I reveal the histogram, you'll see that most everything is in this kind of mid-tone range. There really aren't any super deep, dark shadows, and it's because of the amount of fill that's going into the scene. And we also have these hard highlights. So this is a pretty easy histogram to read. When we're out in bright conditions and we see everything is captured in that mid-tone range, we're okay, we're good to go, we have all the information there. This is a histogram that's very difficult to read. And what you'll see is just everything spiking over here in the shadows. Now, if you don't understand what the histogram means, you might want to overexpose the image. You might wanna to try to push all the information to the right side, right? But that's not what we want. In this final image, if I look in Lightroom, if I were to expose this in a way where we're trying to get to a balanced histogram, you get a really terrible looking image. Like, we want to have some images. If, you're, if you intend the scene to be dark, it's okay that part of the histogram ends up being dark. So in this case, this is completely okay. But once again, 
I need my highlighter enabled because when I look at the image, I have to make sure that the bright areas of the skin are not actually blown out. So if we go back to this last image, you'll see the only thing that's blinking is the actual light itself, but his skin tone is not blinking. I can't read that information from this view, from the histogram. The reason is that little tiny spike in highlight is impossible to see on the histogram. So I need my highlight alert in cases where the areas that might be blown out are incredibly small. They won't be revealed in the histogram, but the highlight alert will help me to catch it. Okay, similarly, let's go to another image. So this is another image that's great to look at. And let me go ahead and rotate the camera because what I want you to see here is that it's okay to again, have areas of an image that are blown out if you intend for a very bright image. Here I intend for a very bright image. So when I'm looking at this, I'm making sure that I have all my shadow detail and I'm letting the highlights fall off. In post, we're gonna end up processing this to be a very, very bright image. In fact, if I showed you that image, I would likely process it to be up here, to be very bright and not really retain any of the highlights. The reason is, well, what's outside of those windows is nothing great to be looking at. It's cars and junk and stuff. I want this to be a bright and airy type look. So if we look at the histogram, we see a lot of that information in the midtones. We see quite a bit of information as well in the highlights, but we also have a, a spiked area where it's blowing out. That's okay. It's intentional for this type of an image, for this type of a shot. There's one other image I wanna show you. This was shot in a jujitsu studio and the overall goal and look of this is to simulate natural light. We're actually using flash, but it's to simulate natural light and to create a very bright environment for these images to go up on their walls. So once again, in this type of a shot or in any scene where you have a lot of white, maybe it's snow, maybe it's walls that are white, whatever it might be, we have a lot of white and you're gonna to expect to see that spike over here on the right side. So this go around, we see the spike all the way into the highlights. We see shadows being a very small piece of the image. And once again, these types of images are absolutely critical to be using that highlight alert. Because again, in camera, I need to know if there's little areas of clothing and highlights that are blown out. And the histogram is gonna be difficult to give me that information. Okay, so use your highlight alert in conjunction and I would recommend that you place it into that quick menu so that way it's easy to access. It's that first button press. Look at this. All I have to do to turn it on and off is menu, highlight alert, disable, menu, and I'm back to shooting again. Or I just press the trigger button, okay? So make it quick and easy to turn on and off so that way you can look at it with and without. You can show clients however you like. So back on this side, what is the proper exposure for each of these different scenes? I'm gonna give you a couple basic ideas or general rules, okay? When it comes to a scene like this, the goal here is to maximize dynamic range. When we're doing that, what we're doing is we're trying to get to an exposure where we've retained every bit of shadow possible and we've retained all the highlights that we possibly can. Now on newer cameras like Sony's and, and Nikon's and all these cameras that do 14, 15 stops of dynamic range, you get even more. This camera was fairly limited and we still have plenty of dynamic range to work with. So what you wanna do is preserve all the shadows all the way through to the highlights. Now on images like this, you have to go with intention, right? The intention here are for the shadows. We want everything to be in shadow with a red wall behind him and we want just highlights chiseling out features. So it's okay that everything is pushed to the left on this side. It's intentional. In fact, if I pushed it to the right, we'd end up ruining our image. This also brings up a really nice little demonstration here of what you're seeing in the Lightroom histogram versus the camera. On the Canon, you were seeing a black and white version, which is just showing general information. Some cameras are gonna show you an RGB version. And what we're seeing is it's actually breaking out the different channels and telling us the amount of spike or the amount of information in those channels, right? So for this image, it's very appropriate that the red channel is spiked up because we have a lot of red in the image. So that's all it's showing you is it's actually breaking out the information into the different color channels. Now going over to this image, I would say once again, the goal here is dynamic range. I do wanna make sure that I have as much of my shadows as possible, but there's one small thing here because highlights are on our skin, I wanna make sure no highlights are blown out. So I'm gonna basically push my highlights all the way to that right side without making any of those actual skin tones blown out, okay? Same thing with this shot, we wanna make sure that it's as far right as possible without any of those strong highlights being blown out. This one is a little bit different. This one I know I'm gonna let those highlights blow out. So my goal is, is making sure all of my shadows are retained because in post, 
Well, what I was actually gonna do in post for this image is kind of a, a pastel vibe and look where it's gonna end up being very bright, very light and airy, and then adding contrast and kind of ending up with this very bright and kind of stylized kind of look for that. So with each of these, there's a different kind of goal and intention with the exposure, but your safe place is just preserving as much information as you possibly can. With that, you have a lot of flexibility in post on where you wanna go with those images. Use your histogram, use your highlight alert, and I hope this video was helpful, informative, and got you that much closer to getting to perfect exposure. So watch out for part four of this series. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, I'd love to see your comments below. Feel free to like the video, subscribe to the Adorama TV channel, and I'll see you guys back here next week. Bye.